The Pentagon is getting ready to roll out its brand new stealth bomber, the B-21 Raider, which is earmarked to replace the aging B-1 supersonic swing wing bomber and the B-2 stealth bomber. Remarkably, this would mean the cutting-edge B-21 would team up with the ancient B-52 bomber as the only two bombers left in the U.S. arsenal. Here are the details. On July 6, the U.S. Air Force released what is only the third official rendering of its future B-21 Raider stealth bomber, which is expected to fly by May next year. This new image shows a previously unseen and extremely curious cockpit windscreen configuration. The B-21 is intended to replace the aging B-2 bomber, with which it shares its overall design concept. It will also replace the older B-1 supersonic swing wing bomber. The idea is that the new B-21 will form a two-plane bomber force with the much older B-52 bomber, which first flew in 1952, making the B-52 one of the most enduring airplane designs ever. The new B-21 will be nuclear-capable and designed to accommodate manned or unmanned operations. The Air Force says a minimum of 100 B-21s will be built at an average unit procurement cost of $550 million in 2010 dollars or $673 million in today's dollars. The bomber is being designed with an open systems architecture to reduce integration risk and enable competition for future modernization efforts to adapt to changing threats. The Drive website says the new renderings of the B-21 look a lot like the original high-altitude advanced technology bomber design from the 1980s that preceded the final B-2 configuration. The website says it looks like the B-21's Back to the Future design will likely restore the high-altitude ambitions lost in the compromises of the B-2 program. Newsweek reports that China is increasing its pressure on Taiwan and the Biden administration with an aggressive new tactic. Taiwan's military showed that on March 29th, 10 Chinese warplanes invaded Taiwanese airspace to the island's south and west, while Japan reports that another two Chinese planes cut through its southern airspace to skirt Taiwan's eastern airspace. A Taiwanese official said that the move was designed to practice cutting Taiwan off from Japanese and American intervention if China carries through on its threats to invade Taiwan. This latest incursion saw four Chinese J-16 fighters and four J-10 fighters entering Taiwan's air defense zone in the southeast, together with a KJ-500 control plane. A Y-8 anti-submarine plane was also tracked flying all the way from the southeast to the southwest of the zone. Japan also tracked two Chinese Y-9 planes, one of which turned to fly along the eastern border of Taiwan's air defense zone. The Pentagon is starting to upgrade old rough airstrips on Pacific Island so they can handle modern fighter jets in case its big air bases get taken out. Here are the details. The U.S. military is preparing for what could happen if China launches military strikes to take out its major runway facilities in the Pacific region. The Drive reports that the Pentagon is speeding up efforts to create rough jungle airfields that would be capable of launching and receiving fighter jets if big airfields, like Guam's Anderson Air Force Base, were attacked by swarms of ballistic missiles or by more conventional weapons. That's why Anderson's rough Northwest Field airstrip is currently being upgraded to handle F-35 fighters from Alaska and F-16s from Japan. In the past, only C-130 cargo planes and helicopters sometimes operated from the field. This field has now been lengthened and is fitted with an emergency arresting system to catch damaged jets that can't stop in time. The airstrip and fighters will also form part of the yearly multinational COPE North Air Power exercise that focuses primarily on Guam. The exercise will test the U.S.'s ability to launch less predictable missions of small groups of aircraft from jungle airstrips. The U.K.'s biggest ever warship, the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth, is ready for war. CNN reports that the Royal Navy announced on January 4th that its carrier strike group, centered on its brand new carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth, had achieved initial operating capability. This means that the 65,000-ton carrier, with its air assets and support units, is ready to deploy within five days of receiving orders to do so. Officials have said the carrier's first deployment would include Asia, on a route that would likely take it past China and Taiwan. The carrier is designed to carry up to 72 aircraft like the F-35 stealth fighter jet and various types of helicopters. In a force protection role, the helicopter force may consist of nine Merlin HM-2 anti-submarine helicopters and five Merlin HM-2 crow's nest early warning helicopters. 
helicopters. For shallow water operations, the helicopter force may consist of a mixture of transport and attack helicopters like the Chinook and Apache AH-1. For support, the carrier will have a submarine and two surface escorts, a frigate or anti-submarine warfare, and a destroyer for anti-air warfare. It will be supplied by a Tide-class fleet tanker and a dry stores supply ship. CNN reports that analysts are calling out China's secret maritime militia as it gets increasingly aggressive in its efforts to push other Asian nations out of the South China Sea. China denies that the militia exists, but Western analysts say a quick study of these so-called fishing boats show that they form an integral part of China's military actions. These boats are often huge by fishing boat standards, and they never seem to catch any fish. They have automatic weapons aboard and reinforced hulls, making them very dangerous at close range. With top speeds of around 18 to 22 knots, they are also faster than 90% of the world's fishing boats. Analysts say China is using these weaponized boats to protect large flotillas of normal Chinese fishing boats. In this way, they can quickly bring hundreds of Chinese fishing boats to any disputed island, a flotilla so large that it can't be challenged without triggering a military confrontation. Last month, more than 200 Chinese fishing boats crowded around Woodson Reef for weeks. Woodson Reef is a major fishing ground and part of the Philippines' territorial waters. Some people shout when they get mad. Others repress their anger for years and go quietly insane. It all really depends on what works best for you as an individual. China, for instance, has invented its own unique method of releasing tension. Whenever it's feeling frustrated with the world, or something doesn't go its way, it threatens Taiwan with military force. Yesterday, in response to the G7's moderate expression of support for Taiwan, it broke its own record for incursions into Taiwan's airspace. Here's what you need to know. 28 Chinese military aircraft entered Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ, on Tuesday, according to Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense, a record since Taiwan began publicly noting Chinese incursions, according to Taiwan Central News Agency. Three groups of aircraft flew all the way to the southeastern side of Taiwan, a maneuver Newsweek suggests could be rehearsing cutting off Taiwan from U.S. support in the event of an invasion. In total, these groups included one Y-8 anti-submarine plane, four H-6 twin-engine jet bombers, four J-16 twin-jet, multi-role fighters, and one Y-8 electronic warfare aircraft. Three additional groups of aircraft flew in the airspace between Taiwan and the Taiwan-controlled Dongsha Islands. In total, these included two KJ-500 airborne early warning and control planes, ten additional J-16 twinjet, multi-role fighters, and six J-11 twinjet multi-role fighters. In recent weeks, Chinese pressure on Taiwan has slackened off after air incursions peaked in mid-April, according to Twitter updates by Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense. The previous record for incursions was set in mid-April, with 25 aircraft flying into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. Tuesday's escalation could be seen as a response to a G7 communique made last week. It emphasized the importance of peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait and encouraged the peaceful resolution of cross-strait issues. Former Taiwan Defense Minister Andrew Yang supported this view, telling Taiwan Central News Agency the incursions could be seen as demonstrations of China's ability to carry out joint maneuvers, while also signaling to the international community that it will not retreat over sovereignty issues. Internally, one senior analyst at the government-funded Taiwanese Institute for National Defense and Security Research added that the PLA's maneuvers could be an attempt to appease militarily inclined groups and nationalists in China. So where does China go from here? Well, Beijing maintains that Taiwan is its territory and there are increasing reasons to think it would use military force to gain control of it. An article in Foreign Affairs magazine cites conversations with various academics in claiming that Chinese President Xi Jinping wants the acquisition of Taiwan to be part of his legacy. The same article cites a Global Times survey of Chinese people which says that 70% strongly support using force to unify Taiwan with China, and 37% think it would be best if the war occurred in between three and five years from now. So is an invasion imminent? Of course, no one knows for sure, but at the very least, according to Foreign Affairs magazine, calls for armed unification are building within China's ruling party. A lot may depend on exactly how firm China believes the U.S.'s commitment to Taiwan is. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.